So in this video we will take a look at the differences between sample and population variance. We know that to compute the variance of a population, and here sigma squared, so this is the um, population variance, and that's computed as the sum over all deviations of each data point from the population mean value mu, so the squared deviation, x i minus mu, um, divided by the number of um, population members. And mu is the mean population value, which is the sum over all population members divided by the size of the population np. Yeah, so np is the population size and accordingly if we don't have access to the population um, but only have um, some sample data we would compute the size the variance of a population sigma hat squared as 1 over n and then the sum from 1 to n of the deviation the data points from mu hat and mu hat is the mean value of the sample One to n. however if we look up um, in a textbook we find a different formula for the sample variance so the correct version is given as mu hat squared and then 1 over n minus 1 and then the sum from 1 to n of the squared deviations So instead of dividing by the size of the population, uh, the sample, we divide by um, the sample size minus 1, which makes sigma hat squared larger. So the sample variance is larger than the Um, okay, we can cut this out here. Okay, now why do we have to divide by? n minus 1 instead by 1 uh, by n and this is um, how this is derived okay let's see let's take a sample of data points xi where i is the index running from 1 to and we indicate population statistics as Greeks as Greek values sigma squared and mu and sample statistics with the hatted versions of the symbols and we will make use of expectation operator which computes the expectation value of a random um, variable expectation okay and 
we are interested in the expectation of sigma x squared. Okay, so sigma x squared, we saw the formula for the variance earlier, can be written like 1 over n, and then the sum over the squared deviations, xi minus u hat x. So here we just insert here the formula for the variance. It's wrong. And in the next step, we can multiply, explicitly write down the um, square root. That's xi squared minus 2 xi ux hat plus ux hat squared. So, in the following, I will just write down the um, capital sigma for the um, for the um, sum without explicitly writing the um, indices to abbreviate this a little bit, unless we have some different indices here. Okay, um, we can now split up or distribute the sum across all the terms here in the, um, in the parenthesis. So that means we can write uh, again 1 over n and then write as a sum over all xi squared terms, then minus 2 mu hat 1 over n sum over all xi's plus 1 over n sum over all mu x at square terms. Okay, now this can be simplified a little bit. Let's see. Mu is a constant, so a sum from 1 to n over a constant is n times mu x hat squared. And uh, so we can replace this with n times mu x hat squared and the two n's cancel out so that leaves us with the mu x hat squared. Then as a second step um, This here is the definition of mu x hat. That's the sum over all values of x divided by the number of um, um, terms, 1 over n, and that's the mean value. So this, that means this simplifies to times mu x squared. Which means that we have minus 2 times uh, um, mu squared plus mu squared. So That leaves us with 
minus mu x squared. And now we can write this mu x squared using the definition of the uh, mean value. So the primary term here remains unchanged. And here we have 1 over n sum xi and here the whole parenthesis is squared. Okay. Now we can explicitly multiply out the um, parenthesis. So the front term here is again this. And we can pull out the 1 over n squared and have here the sum over all xi squared plus all the non-quadratic terms xi times xj. And now I'm giving the indices explicitly because here we exclude um, the case that i and j are equal. So good. Now these are three terms. And in the next step, we can exchange the order of the um, expectation operator. It's a linear operator, so we can also put it, pull it into the sums, in the, into the individual sums. So that means we can write 1 over n sum over the expectation of xi squared. Yeah. It's important that the square is um, in the argument of the expectations operator minus one over n squared, and then here the same exercise we have the sum over expectation values of xi squared plus this double sum the expectation value of xi times xj. Okay. And this we can simplify a little bit because the expectation value of xi times xj and here we explicitly exclude the case that i equals j. So that means um, if xi and xj are independent random variables, so they are not the same numbers and they are not correlated in any, any way, this can be written as a product x i times expectation of x j. Yeah? Exactly the same as we can do with uh, probabilities. And the expectation value of x i is the mean value of x, the population mean value, and the expectation value xj is of course the same, because that's exactly the meaning of a mean value. That's the mean outcome of a 
random experiment that um, um, drawing a value x from the population. And these are, oh, that's wrong, first of all. So, this. Okay, so to summarize, if we, we can write here, this is the double sum of mu x times mu x or mu x squared. And let's explicitly write down the indices. The i is running from 1 to n, j is running from 1 to n, and i may not be equal to j. Good. This term here is Again, mu x squared is a constant, so it can be pulled in front of the sums. And this is then n squared minus n mu x squared. And why n squared minus n? That's if you would imagine that um, these two sums would both cover the cases from 1 to n, then we have, um, and each sum contributes n times mu x um, squared, then we would have n squared times mu x squared, but we exclude one um, times, uh, also one term of these sums, um, which makes it n squared minus n. Okay, so again to summarize here to simplify, this can be written as n squared minus n. Okay. And in the next step, we can collect the two terms with the expectation value, and that gives n minus 1 over n um, squared e the expectation of xi squared plus n squared minus n over n squared mu x squared. Um, Good. Um, uh, that's not entirely correct. So we are missing here a sum over all i plus 1 to n. Okay. And um, again, the expectation value of xi squared should not depend on the actual value of the, of the index. So um, concerning the sum, the expectation value is a constant, which means this is again n times the expectation value of xi squared. So that means we can write down the following. We have n minus 1 over n expectation value xi squared plus here we can cancel out one of the n's 
n minus 1 over n mu x squared. Okay. And as it turns out, the expectation value of xi squared can be written as the population variance plus the square of the population mean. So that means that this can be written as n minus 1 over n sigma x squared plus mu x squared. Yeah? These are the population mean and variances, not the sample variances and mean. Um, and here we have an error because this should be a minus, 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 here minus n minus 1 over n mu x squared. Okay, which means that this term and this term cancel out and we have n minus 1 over n sigma x squared as the expectation value of the population of the sample variance sigma x hat squared. So this is not equal to sigma x squared. And this result here is usually called Bessel correction. And it tells us that in order to compute the population variance, if we want to estimate the population variance, we can compute the sample variance and divide it and multiply it with n over n minus 1 as we saw here. So that means we have n n minus 1 times 1 over n and then the sum over all sample squared deviation and since this and this cancels out we are left with this result for um, the variance if we have only access to the sample.